everybody. Zach Streve, Deuce McAllister here with you just off the field uh, here at the Oshner Sports Training Facility. Uh, Deuce and I got an inside look there uh, of what practice was today. Again, abbreviated, short practice. We're here at 1028, walked in around 9 o'clock, so about a 90-minute workout again uh, for the Saints. But did get to see a period of pressure today in the team section of practice, something that we didn't get to see uh, on Monday. Uh, but, but kind of first thoughts here, Deuce. Um, you know, I think both of us are trying to pull as much information as we can out of these little windows, not unlike what the coaching staff is trying to do. But we saw a lot of good stuff today at practice. Um, and I'll start out with a guy that, to me, really stood out today. And I'm sure a lot of people are wondering was Alvin Kamara. Um, I thought looked really good, smooth coming in and out of his routes. Um, I thought he handled the ball very well. But more than anything, and we talked about this on the sideline, Deuce, he looked like old Alvin. He was having fun, jumping around, congratulating teammates. Yeah, I definitely think so. And, Zach, you know, right now the rules only permit them adding 15 minutes as they go on for practice. So Sean could have lasted a little bit longer. But right now, 90 minutes as long as they can go. And I know that may frustrate us as reporters and uh, even the fans, you know, as far as what they get to hear about. But, you know, right now that's what the rules are. And then what was interesting is since they went inside, Sean normally does not go full pads. So it was only helmets and shoulder pads. So, you know, a, lo a lot of people want to know, well, how was Davenport or how was the offensive line defense? line you know well they're not in full pads so it's hard for them to really fire off the ball and do some different things but I would agree Alvin did have a pretty good practice he was alive as far as himself uh you know bouncing around jumping around so you know it may be uh maybe Mickey and he are about to uh finish a deal or it's just the old Alvin he's feeling healthy and you know he had one run where he was really explosive on that run I think it was inside zone but you know I, I think he was definitely a person that stood out you, know, you you, you talk about packages wise uh what what one of the things that i saw was the saints introduced big nickel we talk about being a pressure package you know when you talk about that big nickel you have uh, williams at one safety safety you have malcolm J jenkins at the other safety safety and then cd deuce or uh chauncey Gardner johnson well, i don't know what we're officially calling him but he was the box safety, and so they did run some pressure packages, but that was the first time that we've seen them introduce that big nickel package. Yeah, we did see a nickel run period today, uh, which was good to see some different looks. I think it's hilarious. Every single time we see Drew Brees in the pistol, I don't know where the defensive end is in the NFL that's holding for Drew to pull the ball, uh, but, but it is interesting to see, and we did see Taysom uh, pull one of those in that period and get around the edge for a good run, about 10, 12 yards. Another guy will stay kind of in the in the running back room uh, that I liked a lot on Monday and I thought had a good day again today, had a nice screen pickup uh, down the near sideline to us was Ty Montgomery. And he's a guy that I think could pay big dividends as a pickup for the Saints because he is kind of in that Alvin Kamara mold um, in the type of player that he is. And you see those guys doing a lot of the same things. And it's a component the Saints didn't have last year. And it forced Alvin into getting a lot of, a lot of touches. Uh, and he may take a little bit of that pressure off of Alvin this year. Well, I think he'll definitely take some pressure off of Alvin, but I also think, you know, how you use Taysom and himself, it's just another weapon for Sean to be able to have. And I, I would agree he ended up having to take a lap after a fumble, but technically they had tackled him. And then once he was on the ground, they knocked the ball out, but the coaches didn't even like to see that. But not only did he have that throwback screen, he had a run and it was really almost like an inside zone where he just was a creator. Uh, the, the, the safety didn't come squeezed down hard enough, safety or the nickel corner whomever had that responsibility and once he was able to get outside you know you're talking about a plus 10 plus 15 run but I think he is a player that can create in that mold like a Alvin Kamara and he's just one that you're going to see them slowly implement to see how much more he can do and what he feels comfortable doing. Another room offensively Deuce uh, that we've gotten a lot of questions about the tight end room with the new additions that are there, two of them out of the draft class, Adam Troutman and Tommy Stevens, both taking reps today at tight end. Um, and, and listen, early reports uh, on, on Adam Troutman have been very good. We saw him look really good, I thought, an interior run today, really got after it in that period, uh, did, did have a ball thrown his way today, was unable to bring that in. But we saw Tommy Stevens for the second practice in a row make a catch down the field. And, and Deuce, you were extremely jealous of Tommy Stevens' young knees and the kind of hit that he took that he hopped right up from uh, kind of got bent over. But both of those guys, uh, I think, have shown a lot of promise early on in this training camp. 
I know they really like Troutman. I mean, from all indications, look, you know, uh, early on it is helmets and shorts, but, you know, from all indication, he is going to be a guy that they're going to have to not necessarily have to lean on, but he is another weapon when you talk about weapons offensively on things he can do. The one pass that you were talking about, it was a seam route. You know, that that's him understanding a little bit better where this ball has to go. You had Malcolm Jenkins playing the middle of the field. He had the defender beat. It was a zone, but he's got to understand where that football has to be fitted and drew, and he couldn't connect. The more that he runs that route, the more that he will get a feel of how teams and where that football has to be placed for him to be able to catch it, but not also not get dislodged. We also saw uh, a safety um, Williams almost um, come up with a pick uh, across the middle. Marcus, Marcus, he was uh, playing zone and it was a throw. They, Drew was trying to hit um, Jared Cook running an over route or at least a, yeah it was an over route and you know Marcus Williams had a shot at interception if not it was going to be a dislodging hit and so as they kind of work back into things like that of that nature you can see them involved in the tight end it was an over route as well it was just a, a, a deep over for Tommy Stevens that he caught over the middle and yeah you know the way that he got hit he banded back and I was like ugh that's ugly. I mean, but he popped right, right up and nothing was wrong with him. Uh, you know, and you can see that he is continuing to develop as a tight end as well. On the defensive side of the ball, we saw Demario Davis out of practice today. Craig Robertson filling in that role. Uh, we also saw Alex Anzalone take some time at the mic, particularly in the nickel run period. Um, so a lot of moving around there. We saw a lot of pieces in that linebacker, in that linebacker area, especially considering they were in two linebacker sets for a majority of the day. We saw Joe Bashi get some time, Chase Hansen, who some people may remember from last year, spent all last season on the NIF list with a non-football injury. Um, what were your, your impressions of the defense, of the linebacker core today? That's another area where the Saints continue to look for depth. Well, I think uh, overall, I thought it was okay. I mean, like I said, for a linebacker, you had Craig Robinson. He had a couple A-gap blitzes. You know, the center guard, they were able to pick him up. But I think overall for those guys, they did a pretty good job outside of a couple runs being able to feel and allow those safeties to come up and make the tackle or the linebackers themselves making the tackle. I mean, this is going to be – And then finally, Deuce, we'll finish on this. The defensive line for this team, always a place. Just like offensive line, you're constantly looking for depth uh, and, and filling out your rotation. Um, Trey Hendrickson had a nice pressure in the period today against the first group, uh, as well as David Onyemata. So it looked good up front, I thought, today from a pass rush perspective. Definitely so. I know one player on uh, 99, Shai Toto, he got kind of banged up a little bit. Looked like he got rolled up and uh, he was able to kind of walk off or limp off the field. Uh, I didn't see him go back in. That was early on in team run and he was going against the one offense. So you talk about guys like Eric McCoy and Easton and um, uh, Toronto Armstead and he just got kind of rolled up. They looked at that. I think that was that right knee that kind of got bent. He, he, he was bended back a little bit. So it'll be something to kind of watch as far as he is concerned. Concern, but, you know, I, I thought Onyemata got really nice pressure, uh, you know, and it was on a pass rush. Drew did a good job of being able to step up and still complete the pass. Uh, I think that was to Michael Thomas. But, you know, overall, you're going to get pressure. You know, right right now, we're looking at the snap count. And, man, you talk about guys, Grandison, uh, and, and a, lot of, a, a lot of other guys, they're jumping that snap count left and right. And it makes you look and it's like, man, is the snap count off? You know, what, what's, what's going on there? But those defensive linemen right now, they're trying to jump that count to be able to say, hey, look, you know, I was back there to get the quarterback for a sack. Let me tell you what we called that uh, when I was playing on the offensive line. We called them cheaters. <laughs> They're cheating. They know our snap count. They're cheaters. That's what they are. That's just me uh, becoming an offensive lineman again. All right, that'll do it from Deuce and I. There'll be lots of content all day long. You can catch Deuce and I. Bobby will be introduced next week as he's in with Steve Geller. Every day, post-practice, you can get the first reaction here from WWL across all of our platforms. Deuce and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in.